Greetings from Golf Scorecards Incorporated, the largest scorecard printer in the United States. Although often overlooked, scorecards are one of the most important purchases a course can make. If you've ever had the misfortune of running out of cards in the middle of a busy season, you know what we mean. Every golfer on your course uses your scorecard, and it's in your best interest to make sure it's as functional and aesthetically pleasing as possible. We've created a short 15-minute video to help you do just that. In the first part of the film, we discuss how to optimize your grid design for maximum functionality. You'll learn how to arrange your tees, combine handicap and par lines, display combo tees, and much more. The second section covers the economics of scorecards, how many to order, when to order them, and what variables affect price. The final section looks at trends in the golf industry and how they have influenced the design of the scorecard over the years. Tee it forward, pace of play, junior and family tees, We'll go over each of them in turn and discuss what you need to keep in mind when you're working on your design. Making your scorecard grid easy to use. The scoring grid is the most important part of the scorecard. Well-designed grids are important for golfers. You need to make sure it is easy to use, well-organized, and as decluttered as possible. Here are a couple pointers to keep in mind when you're designing your grid. First off, the placement of your tees. There are two different ways of arranging your tees. You can split them up into men's and women's tees, like the card on the left, or put them all at the top, like the card on the right. If you have a lot of tees, splitting them up can be a good way of avoiding confusion over which tees are men's and which tees are women's. On the other hand, if your tees are gender neutral, you might want to stack them all at the top and use color coding to differentiate one tee from another. You'll have to experiment with your grid and see what looks best. Now, look for ways to reduce the total number of rows on the grid. This will allow your scoring lines to be larger and usually makes your grid more aesthetically appealing. For starters, we can combine par lines using a slash if there are any differences. Sometimes you can combine handicap lines as well, again using a slash if needed. If there are too many differences between the men's and women's handicaps, you might want to leave them as two separate lines. Plus, if you separate the tee lines, it helps to identify the top tees as men's tees and the bottom tees as women's tees, especially if you include the genders on the handicap lines. If you are unsure which way would be better, ask your scorecard designer for their advice. If you've got combo tees, you can use an entirely separate row or use arrows, circles, or diamonds to indicate which tee to use. You'll probably end up with some extra space after consolidating these rows, which means you can widen your scoring area. You want the scoring part of the grid to be as big as possible. Golfers need enough space to write their names, record their scores, and put down any other info they need, like their member number. If your grid is still looking too crowded and you've got room on your rules panel, you can migrate the rating and slope info to a different part of the card. Keep in mind that if you have a lot of cart play, you'll want to move essential info like whole numbers to the middle of the grid. The steering wheel clips in the carts cover up the top half inch of info, so anything your golfers are going to need should be moved down. Finally, consider the use of color on your grid. This is a standard looking grid, with the background of the tee rows colored in. If you're going for a more conservative look, you might want to color the yardage numbers instead of the background. See how much more subdued that makes it? Now let's compare. We've gone from three handicap lines to two, combined the par lines, and went from separate combo lines to circles. The extra space has gone to enlarging the scoring grid. Which grid would your golfers rather use? Before we bring this section to a close, let's have a brief discussion about vertical grids. Vertical grids are not very common, and the courses that do use them tend to be conservative private facilities. In the early days of golf, most scorecards were printed with vertical grids, the idea being that it was easier to do math when the numbers were stacked on top of each other. Although most courses have long since transitioned to horizontal grids, clubs that want to emphasize their respect for tradition might choose to use a vertical grid. 
Vertical grids are functionally the same as horizontal grids. There are no particular advantages or disadvantages to using a vertical grid over a horizontal one. Also remember to orient your grid properly. When you open the scorecard, make sure the top of the grid is on the left-hand side and the bottom of the grid is on the right-hand side. Finally, many cards with vertical grids use a horizontal or landscape orientation on the front cover. If you have a photo on your front cover, consider how it would look as a landscape layout. Scorecard Economics and Quantity Most scorecard printers charge similar prices. What you pay will vary widely, however, based on paper stock, card size, and quantity ordered. The paper stock you print on will heavily influence price. If you're on a tight budget, you'll probably want to stick with whatever paper your scorecard printer offers as their house stock, assuming, of course, that the paper is writable and stiff. Card size is the next big influencer of price. Scorecards come in multiple sizes, but generally speaking, they are either large or small. Small cards are typically 6x8 or 4.5x12. Large cards are commonly 6x12 or 5x12. Ultra-large cards can be as big as 6x17. The third and largest factor that affects price is the quantity ordered. 5,000 cards costs less than 20,000, which costs less than 40,000. But the cost per card on the 5,000 order is much more than on the 20,000 order, while the 40,000 order is more cost-effective than both of them. Here's why. In this example, the amount of paper and ink used for each card is the same three quarters of a cent. The more you print, the more the total cost of paper and ink will be. But the cost per card remains the same. Next to consider are fixed costs. Getting the press ready for printing, making the color plates, cleaning up after printing, etc. All of these things must be done, and it takes the same amount of time no matter what the quantity is. In this illustration, we show the fixed cost totaling $500. When you add the paper, ink, and fixed cost together, you can see that the cost per card changes dramatically. The total cost of 5,000 cards is $537.50, or 10 and 3 quarter cents per card. Compare that to 20,000 cards for $650 at 3 and a quarter cents per card, and 40,000 cards for $800 at two cents per card. These are just made up numbers, but you can see that even though you're spending more on paper and ink on the larger order, you're actually saving money because that fixed printing cost is the same. However, because you get a better price per card by ordering more, many people are tempted to order two or even three years worth of cards at once. Don't. It's Murphy's Law of ordering cards. As soon as that three-year supply shows up, you'll learn you're going to be re-rated next spring and still have 40,000 cards left, or a freak rainstorm floods hole 14 and you have to turn it from a par 5 into a par 3. We always recommend ordering just one year's supply of scorecards. It's usually a big enough amount that you still get price breaks, while not being the end of the world if you have to make changes earlier than you originally thought. Of course, if you know you'll have changes coming but are running low, you'll want to order just enough to get you by until those changes come in, at which time you can place your large annual order. So how many cards is a year's supply of cards? A good rule of thumb is to take two-thirds of the total number of rounds at your facility in a year. For example, if your course does 30,000 rounds per year, you'll probably want to order about 20,000 scorecards. Or, if you do 50,000 rounds, you'll need 33,000 cards. Most printers have standard quantities for printing, so in this case it may require ordering 40,000 cards every 15 months. Bear in mind that this is just an estimate. Actual card usage on your course will vary from year to year based on a variety of factors including weather, number of rounds played that year, and visitors taking the card as a souvenir. But a look at your historical rounds and the size of your scorecard orders should confirm the annual number of cards used. 
It also pays to watch your scorecard inventory carefully, and always place your next order before opening your last box. You need to allow enough time for changes, printing, and delivery. Check with your printer to see how much time is needed to turn around an order. It is no fun to run out of cards, and expensive, too. Scorecard Design Trends The golf industry has embraced a number of changes over the last several years in an attempt to encourage casual and beginning golfers to either take up the game or play more. As a result, the scorecard has evolved as well, changing to accommodate the addition of tee at forward programs, junior tees, combination tees, pace of play reminders, and more. Here are some of the bigger trends we see and their impact on the scorecard. Tee at forward is a very common program we see, where more tee options are offered and golfers are encouraged to play at the tees that best match their ability. Tees are more likely to be gender neutral, making it comfortable for men who aren't long hitters to play from the shorter tees. Gender neutral means tees are no longer explicitly identified as men's tees or women's tees, and the colors are typically changed as well. If you have a tee at forward program, keep in mind how gender neutral tees will affect the layout of your grid. Here you can see all the tees have been put at the top of the grid and the longest tees have been colored red, a color traditionally associated with shorter women's tees. Junior tees and family tees are something we see a lot as well. These tees are a common strategy to introduce kids to golf and are an important part of the player development program for many courses. If you have junior or family tees, remember you need enough space on the grid to accommodate them. If your grid is tight already, you might need to increase the size of your card or migrate some information elsewhere. Many clubs also put the information on a separate family tee card as well. Combination tees are a popular and low-cost way to make the course more interesting for golfers who play your facility regularly. Combo tees are great, but again, keep in mind how much space you have on the grid. We've already discussed combo tees earlier in this video. If you're running low on space on your grid, refer to some of our tips on how to display combo tees. Pace of play initiatives are becoming increasingly common, and the scorecard will often include a reminder to keep pace. Some cards include the pace of play in their rules somewhere, while other cards put the actual pace of play times on the grid. Liability statements are another fairly standard practice these days, typically a line or two of text absolving the golf course of any liability for personal injury or property damage. Liability statements often go on the rules panel. If you are planning to include one on your card, you might have to edit down your rules to make everything fit. Scorecard dimensions tend to be getting taller as well, going from 4.5 or 5 inches tall to 6 inches tall. Whereas 10 years ago, 4.5 by 12 cards were most common, most cards these days are 6 inches tall to accommodate additional T rows. 5 T lines, 2 handicap lines, a par line, and 8 player spaces are much easier to arrange on a 6 inch tall card than a 4.5 inch tall card. We've covered a lot of material in this video. If you need ideas, check out our portfolio at golfscorecards.com. We have over 200 samples on the website, and you can search for specific things like combo tees or things that haven't been covered in this video, like maps. If you'd like more information or have questions about something we've discussed in this video, feel free to give us a call at 1-800-238-7267 or email us at info at golfscorecards.com. Thanks for watching.